Amen. Uh, the title of the message today is Communication Outpouring because we're in the time of the outpouring and God is speaking. God is letting us know so many things and we're going to be talking about how he communicates with us and we're going to be looking at three basic areas, prophecy, uh, dreams, and visions. And so we're, those are ways that he communicates with us. They're not the only ways, but they're important ways. And I want to start by saying they're very important and they can be life and death kind of communication. Mm -hmm. And there was one night uh, after we had come to Honduras, we had been on a trip to Honduras and we came back uh, and it was on a, a Saturday night and I, I laid my head down after being away uh, there in uh, Honduras for a week. I laid my head on a pillow and, and the Lord communicated with me. Now, I don't remember exactly how he communicated with me in the, in my sleep, but it was in the night because I was, I was asleep and I knew uh, because he had communicated with me that I was to get up and go pray. Uh, that was not exactly what I wanted to do. Having been gone from my uh, house for a week. I was ready to sleep, have a good night's sleep, but he wanted me to pray. So I got up, I went out on the porch and I prayed and I prayed for an hour. I prayed in tongues. I knew who I was praying for. It was not a friend. It was an acquaintance. It was a minister, not in this city, but someone I knew in a nearby city, uh, nearby uh, town. And so I prayed. I prayed for her for an hour. That's all I knew. I went back to bed. After an hour, it was released. And uh, so then in a, a few weeks later, I went uh, to see her husband uh, because I knew where he was, where his office was, and I went in and visited with him. And I said, I, I want to tell you what happened on such and such a day at such a time because it was at midnight mm -hmm. on, and I knew exactly the day because it's the day we came back from Honduras. And uh, I, I said, I, the Lord told me to pray for your wife and I prayed for an hour. Okay. And he said, I know exactly what happened on that day and that hour. That was the hour my wife died. And mm -hmm. she started going she, uh, her spirit left her body. She started going down a tunnel, a tunnel of light before she got to the end of it. The Lord spoke to her and said, lady, your time on earth is not up. You turn around and go back and you minister, uh, and you share the gospel, uh, to the people. And so she turned around and went back and came back into her body and she's alive and, and mm -hmm. she rose up. And uh, at that time, she was in the hospital, and I didn't know where she was. I didn't know what her situation was. She was 800 miles away from here. Even though she lived uh, uh, maybe 20 or 30 miles from here, she was 800 miles when I prayed for her. And so the Lord brought her up, raised her up, raised her from the dead. And that happened because he spoke to me in the night season in a dream and told me to to pray, and I did. So I was faithful to do what he had said, and it was a life and death matter. So what I'm saying, I just want to introduce this topic to you then, saying these can be very important, and I can show you some other things that are, mm -hmm. uh, that are important to how God has communicated. Okay, so he's communicating, uh, and I'm going to start with Acts 2.17. That's our basic, uh, basic, uh, verse for this message. Acts 2.17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Okay, so he's communicating through prophecies, dreams, and visions. Now, What's important here, he's pouring it out on all flesh. This is, we're in the last days. Mm -hmm. We're in the last days. He's pouring it out on all flesh. You know, that means believers, and that means unbelievers, unbelievers. and sinners. And, and so you need to be prepared to interact with people. 
because everybody is getting dreams. What we're going to be focusing on today are interpreting dreams. Uh, but it really relates to all of all three of these ways of communicating. And uh, a woman told me on this past Sunday that uh, she had ministered uh, with a group of young people in a congregation and uh, about about prophecy and uh, at the end, she broke the group up into two people and had them prophesy to each other. Well, the, pro the pastor just had a fit and said, uh, no, you, you're not supposed to be doing that. Uh, okay, so why would anybody just dispute this verse right here that we need to be preparing our young people to prophesy, we need to give them the foundations? Otherwise, they're just going to be out there. They're going to, God's going to be communicating with them, and they don't know what he's saying. So let's let our young people know how to prophesy and uh, how to interpret dreams and how to interpret visions. Let's get in line with God and what God is doing in these days. Thank you. We need to be preparing people. And you're going to run across sinners who are who are dreaming, having dreams, and they. And if you don't, if you don't start communicating with them and tell them you can inter interpret dreams, they're going to go to a mystic or, or, a, or a, fortune teller. a fortune teller because they want to know what God is saying. They may not know it's God, but they're having dreams. And so he's, he's communicating with all flesh. Let's get with his program, with what he is doing, and people need to know how to interpret things. And so this is a really important message. Uh, and it's an introductory uh, message. It's, it's a beginning. And what I want to say is that we all need to be seeking God because he wants to communicate with us. And we need to be prepared to communicate with and to receive these communications and understand them. Amen. And I'm going to ask Sherry to read this verse out of Proverbs 25 uh, because it says, He gets glory by hiding mysteries, but you are rewarded when you search them out. You are a king and you search out what he's speaking to you. In Proverbs 25, verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. But the glory of kings is to search out the matter. Okay. I, I've gone over this before. You are kings. You, you're supposed to rule in this life. And, and so if you want to have authority, then you need to know how to search out matters and secrets, the mysteries of God. They are for you. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. They're not for the people out on the street. They're for you. Mm. He's communicating with you. And he, he's doing it through mysteries, uh, through prophecies. And, and uh, they're going to be symbols, through symbols in those prophecies. There's going to be symbols in the dreams. There's going to be symbols in the uh, visions. And we need to be talking. We need to be prepared. Uh, and, and we're going to talk about these. And so the, there's two things I, I really want to lay as foundation. And one is you need a context for your own dreams and visions and prophecies. You need the context. And, and to help you understand this, let's say you are on a boat floating in the Atlantic Ocean, okay? And then if uh, somebody comes up to you and says, well, New York is uh, so many hundreds of miles in that direction, and, uh, and uh, Honduras is so many hundred miles in that direction, that means nothing to you if you don't want to go any of those places. Oh, do you hear me? Mm. If you're just floating. See, most people are just floating mm. in the sea yeah, of humanity. humanity. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you need to have a goal, a purpose. And so the prophecies don't mean anything to people who don't have a goal, who don't, who don't want to find out anything. And they, a lot of people like to hear prophecies and they just take it like sugar. Oh boy, this is sugar. This is sweet. 
Now let me run someplace else and get another word of prophecy. Yeah. But they have no intention of doing anything with it. So we have to put things in context. We don't want to be floating in the Atlantic Ocean and God's trying to communicate to mm -hmm. us a direction to go. And once he tells us, we just say, well, oh, that was sweet. Yeah. But I'm just going to stay here and I'm just going to float mm -hmm. in the ocean and I don't care where I go, just wherever the currents take me, where the winds take mm -hmm. me. No, we've got to have more focus and more, yeah, more, purpose. more purpose than that because you've been put on the earth for a purpose. You have a destiny. Hallelujah. Okay, so let me tell you how I uh, have a context for the things he talks to me uh, because I ask him two basic questions, but... Before I say the questions, I want to just put it, I want a greater revelation of God, who he is becoming in my life, mm -hmm. and a greater revelation of who I am becoming in Christ. Okay, so I have two questions. I ask him, how can I trust you more, and how can I become more trustworthy? Now, those may not be the questions you want to ask for yourself, but I'm saying you need to come up with some basic questions, and then when he speaks to you, they will be in context. See, if you're just floating on the ocean, letting the winds carry you, the currents carry you, then there's no context to what God says to you. But if you say, God, who are you becoming to me? Or who do you want me to become in Jesus Christ? And then if you kind of have these basic questions, then when he begins to communicate with you, you will know, oh, this will help me know God better. This will help me become who I'm supposed to be in Christ. So you need context. Context is king. And as we're looking at prophecies, dreams, and visions, it's good to know context. So search the Lord. Seek the Lord. Ask him questions. And what questions do you want to uh, find out? And then he, he will be communicating with you. Let him tell you what questions to ask him. He will communicate the answers to those. But if you never ask him anything, if you don't have any burning passion in you to know anything more, the, what he says to you will mean nothing to you. So that's the first thing. Mm. That's the first thing that we have to have a context for what he speaks to me, to what he speaks to us. The other thing is, remember, he is communicating in many different ways to everybody, all flesh. He's pouring out his spirit. He's communing. So we're in the, we're in the days in which he's communicating in all these different ways. Now, what I'm going to focus on tonight uh, is... It, or this afternoon, it are really dreams and interpreting. How do we interpret dreams? But before I do that, there's another basic thing I want to say is we have to understand how God speaks, what, what the language of heaven. So mm -hmm. I want to just say a few things about the language of heaven. Hallelujah. And first of all, God calls things that be not mm -hmm. as though they, they are. are. So he... His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and he speaks in a different way. So we have to realize when he speaks to you in prophecies, dreams, and visions, he's using his language. Mm -hmm. He's not using your language. And so that's real important. So I'm going to look at, I want you to read these three verses because God sees everything done. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. He, 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 he's at the ending, and he knows where you're going, and he sees you. He sees you complete in Christ. He sees all of this work done, but we have to learn to walk in what he sees. Mm, Let me say it again. Mm. He sees you complete in Christ. He sees you healed. He sees you whole, and now we are learning. We're in the process of learning how to walk in completion and how to walk in healing, how to walk in prosperity. Hallelujah. He sees you rich in Christ. And, and so, mm -hmm. so we have to realize, first of all, that it, this is heaven communicating to us, and heaven has a different language than the earth. Uh, and so we need to 
that will help us understand what he communicates to us through dreams, visions, and prophecies. So I want Sherry to read these three verses to just help us understand and anchor that the language of heaven is different than the language of earth, okay? Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom you believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Okay, so he speaks different than you and I okay. speak. He, he calls things that do not exist as if they exist. Yes. Ooh, hallelujah. Oh, he looks at yeah. your body and he, he calls your body healed How? Oh. and whole. He, he looks at... And so this is a part of understanding the language of heaven. This will help us understand dreams, prophecies, and visions, okay? Colossians 2.10. And in him you have been made complete, and he is the head over every ruler and every authority. Okay, God sees us complete, okay? But it's our, we're in a process of walking into completion and into perfection. Okay, one more verse. Uh, 2 Peter one three for his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence okay the point here he has granted everything to us but we're learning how to walk in the promises Okay, so that's a real important thing in understanding your dreams and visions and prophecies. You need to realize that he's looking at things from a different perspective oh, yeah, than people on the earth. Now, well, we're going to get more practical. We're going, I'm going to go over seven categories <laughs> of dreams, visions, and prophecies. And then I'm going to look at eight symbols used in dreams, prophecies, and uh, visions. Now, these are things that we've encountered over the years, and so this is not uh, complete, but yeah. these are just some important starting points, and this will help you understand your dreams. It's very important for you to understand your dreams. You need to know how to interpret them, but not only you, your dreams, but you also need to be in a position to help other people because they are having dreams and they don't know what to do with them. But after this lesson today, you will know how to interpret your dreams and you'll know how to help other people mm -hmm. interpret their dreams. So let's, let's look at something that Job said. This just shows you there's different categories. Job 33 verses 14 through 18. For God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive it. Oh. Okay, verse 15. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon the people while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of the people and seals their instruction in order to, verse 17, in order to turn man from his deeds and conceal pride from man, verse 18, he keeps back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. Oh, there is so much to, in those verses right there. So very much that it's going to keep us from perishing. It's going to keep us from destruction if we can understand our dreams. And, and there are a lot of different categories. He speaks in a lot of different ways in the dreams. And so this really applies to all three dreams, prophecies, and visions. But I'm just going to focus on dreams and say uh, there are basically seven categories that, Jerry, that the Lord has shared with us over time and that we... Um, put our dreams. Are they in one of these seven? These are the most uh, seven important ones. And the first is communication. He's communicating with you. And that what Job just said, mm -hmm. he's opening our ears. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to share a dream with you. Uh, and this is probably one of the most important dreams in my life. And it was a very simple dream. Uh, and 
Well, let me explain to you. I was raised in a denomination where nobody ever told me I should hear from the Lord or I could hear from the Lord or how to hear from the Lord. And so when I began seeking the Lord, uh, there was a time I received this dream. And it was a little mouse. And the mouse had a big ear. It's like a human ear on it. And that little mouse scurried away. That was the dream. That was the full dream. Okay. That would... Most people wouldn't have thought anything about it, but I got some interpretation. I, it became interpreted. Uh, God interpreted to, to me by the Holy Spirit. And what I received from the dream was this. That little mouse was me, and I was beginning to hear the Lord. So I had a big ear. I could hear the Lord, mm -hmm. and I was scurrying away. Now, remember, I was in a denomination where there were, we were never instructed about hearing the Lord or, or following the Lord or anything like that. It's just about be a good person and do good works and the, the kind of, those kinds of things. Okay, so this is what I got from the dream, that yes, I was beginning to hear the Lord. I, my ear was sensitive to him, in tune to him, and I was hearing what he was saying. And what he was saying to me, I was going to have to leave uh, that denomination. I was going to have to go out. And, and that was the most important thing in my life because I, I can see myself today. I could have stayed in that denomination, mm -hmm. sat on that pew, and I would have been there every Sunday morning and every Wednesday night. I would have been sitting in that pew and just listening about how good God was and how what, what good things I should be doing. And, and, and there would really be no nothing else for me just to be there every every time the doors open, okay? But my life changed because all of a sudden I realized I had an encounter with God. I knew this dream, although it was very simple, but it had a symbol in it, and I, I had to trace, see, I had to discover what it meant. But I discovered by the Holy Spirit uh, that it meant that I was hearing the Lord and what I was hearing was I needed to leave and, and go out. And I didn't know where. I was like Abraham. I, I needed to go out, uh, and he was going to show me. And he has. Over all these years, he has showed me step by step where I was to go. So this was one of the most important, uh, it's probably the most important dream I ever had. Uh, and, and I had a clear interpretation of it, and I look back today, and it's still, I still have that same understanding. Now, I want to say one thing about dreams. Dreams don't mean anything, anything without interpretation. interpretation. And, and so you look at prophecy, okay, you've got prophecy, you've got tongues and interpretation. But if you only have tongues, you don't have anything. Only tongues. So you have to do the tongues and interpret the tongues. Then when you have a tongue and you interpret it, it's the equivalent to a prophecy. Well, that's the way a dream is. You have the dream, you receive an interpretation from the Holy Spirit, and it's equivalent to prophecy. Hallelujah. Both the dream and the interpretation. And so we're going to learn how to interpret these uh, dreams because everybody has them. And if you don't think you have them, then I'm going to show you how to find out that you do have them. Because God is, what he said, he's pouring out, pouring his, spirit. out his spirit on all flesh. Are you all flesh? Are you part of that old fle all flesh? We all are. He is pouring out his spirit. He's communicating. This is communication. Okay, so the first one I said was uh, just a communication. The second one is a warning. Um, and I had a dream. We were uh, investing in some property, and I had a dream. And in the dream, I, I saw the house we were uh, thinking about buying, and I saw a tree in front of it, and a snake uh, dropped out of in front uh, out of that tree. Okay, now a snake, what that snake means, it means lies and deception because there was a serpent in the, in the uh, Garden of Eden, and it... it He's the father of lies. And so that was a lie, okay? There was a lie associated with what people were trying to sell me that they did not reveal to me that there was asbestos in that house that had to, uh, that had to be uh, taken care of. So I didn't buy that house because God showed me in a dream not to buy the house. 
Okay. The third uh, is on direction. Uh, the, I'm talking about categories. I'm talking about seven categories of dreams, of, of dreams and or, visions, or prophecies, or, or visions. Seven categories, a and uh, then the third one is direction. And see, well, there was one time I had a dream about two buildings in another city, and I saw congregations in those. Uh, buildings and worshiping the Lord. So after a while, I went to that city and I went to those two buildings and both of them were vacant buildings with weeds in all around them because nothing. But I prayed and interceded and then shortly after their congregations moved into those. See, that was God's will. Uh, he wanted congregations uh, to be in those buildings but somebody had to go there and prepare for that. That was a dream. Mm -hmm. um, number four is counsel about a situation you are you are in. Uh, that he's going to counsel you about a situation. See, there are times you need to know things that that you don't know, but but God knows about them. Just like that asbestos in that house. Okay, so one one dream I had. Uh, let's say one night I saw this actor up on the stage and he jerked off his jacket and he, mm -hmm. he did certain motions. Okay, that was the dream. I knew he was an actor on the stage. Well, the next night I went to the church service and, and there was a visiting minister there. He did exactly what I had seen in the dream. He jerked off his jacket. He put it down and he did all these motions. And, and God was saying, this is just an actor. This is not real. He's just acting. Mm -hmm. He may say he's here in the uh, representing uh, the Lord, but he's just acting. Okay, so I had counsel about a situation. Now you can also have instruction about God, about your relationship with God with God. Uh, in a dream, you can also, it can release potential. It can release potential. It mm -hmm. shows you what you're going to be, and you might never have thought you were going to be that, and, but yet that dream shows you uh, what potential, and it releases it, then you can walk in it. Oh. Maybe sometimes you have to see it, Oh, hallelujah, before you can walk in it, and God's going to show you purpose and destiny and, and things to come, and, and you see them in a dream, and then you walk in them. That's releasing the potential. Oh, I have a dream. That, okay. I have an example about this, this particular kind of dream, and that is I have prayed. I mean, I have had three dreams about Vietnam, and when the, the first dream that I had about Vietnam, I was sitting in the middle of a forest area on the porch of a little little house and i was just sitting there uh, in a chair and all of a sudden i saw uh, these people bringing a person uh, laying on this uh, cot um, or stretcher and they were bringing him up to the porch where i was and what they said to me in the dream is that we have heard uh, that 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 you have a gift to heal, and we've brought this sick uh, sick boy to you, and and so I went down off the porch and I began to pray for this young boy, and he got up and and off of the stretcher and walked, and and was healed, totally healed. Hallelujah. And so you know this this released something in me yes. because this was uh, years ago that I had this dream. And I've had two more concerning Vietnam, and they they were in the same category of releasing uh, potential. Okay. Now, the seventh point I want to make, then I'll just review them uh, quickly, but the seventh one, you can drive back evil as a result of the dream. Mm -hmm. And a good example was Sherry. Mm -hmm. uh, this was about uh, six years ago. It was about seven years seven ago. Seven yeah. years ago, Sherry saw our oldest son, uh, who was on drugs, saw him in a casket of being, uh, in a funeral, being taken to bury. Okay, mm -hmm. so what? Right, I, I saw um, uh, Jason in a coffin, 
and it was like a like back in Sicily or Italy where they um, took the casket up this uh, the hillside or a dirt road and they were carrying it uh, to and all the people were following uh, the casket and they were taking it to the cemetery and and when they opened up the casket uh, I saw our son Jason and so that released a potential in me to intercede to begin to pray and I did with earnest I began to intercede and pray for his deliverance for his salvation and for the Lord to reverse that that the the death sentence and so uh two days later he was picked up by the police and put in jail and while he was in jail he came back to the Lord and and after he got out of jail he shared with me that there had been a contract of of someone to kill him uh, to take him out because he was distributing judge uh, drugs processing drugs using drugs and he was in with a very um corrupt uh crowd of people and they had put out a hit on him and and he he shared with me that that was why he was running as because they were were about to kill him okay so a very important point here is when you see something in a dream you can change it it doesn't mean that's what's it's going to happen right right you can change it but if you just say oh well it wasn't that interesting i saw this in a dream no god is showing you something so you can change it oh hallelujah case, Sherry changed uh our son being killed and, and now then, now he's He's, he's serving the Lord. He's serving the Lord. Totally different. Totally different. The dreams are important. God wants to communicate with you. And that's a very important way. Let me just go over these seven uh, things again quickly. Uh, and, and not that this is all the categories, but it just helps you to begin to think about, oh, this dream. What did it mean? Now, one of the ways you begin to find out what it meant, you begin to think about, how did I feel? What did I see? What did I... And, and and so you you begin to analyze it, but it's your responsibility to seek it out but there are people who have the gift of interpretation and, and we can help people interpret mm. where they were instructing you on how to interpret dreams so i'm going to go over the seven again and then we're going to look at eight categories of symbols because there's symbols throughout god's communication so number one is communication he opens your ear number two oh glory to god there's it may be a warning number mm -hmm. three direction number number four it might be commun uh, counsel about a situation you're in number five it may be instruction about your relationship with god you know jesus said uh, my words uh, that i've spoken to you have cleaned you up Okay, so we need we need God speaking to us. He can speak to us through a dream and help clean us up. If there's something we're doing wrong, he can give us instruction in a dream. Okay, and then uh, we can have power released, a potential mm -hmm. released, find out something. Uh, and, it, and like Sherry said, mm -hmm. uh, that her potential for uh, gift of healing it was really it's she first saw it in the dream and then it was released oh hallelujah and you can drive back evil see our son is alive today because we saw things uh that that needed to be diverted and changed so what you see in hallelujah. the dream doesn't mean that's what's going to happen it means it'll happen if you don't pray oh Come on, mm -hmm. there, there's That's responsibility. Good. Okay, good. now let's just jump quickly to eight symbols. Now there's multiple symbols. Yeah, many, you know, many symbols. You know, I gave you a little mouse with an, uh, with an ear. I gave you a snake. Okay, so I'm going to talk about just quickly eight symbols. And the first one is snakes. I've already talked about that. But that's that you go, you can always, when you look at the symbols, what you want to do is take them back to, to the, the Bible. Back, what, does the, the what does the Bible say about that? And that gives you an idea about the symbol. Now, in a particular situation, uh, the symbol could be evil or it could be good or it could be personal, could be related to you. And, and so we have to look at. Uh, so it's good. We need to know the categories that helps us understand what it's about. We need to know the symbols 
and that's helpful. But none of that is enough to know what the dream is. You still have to have, have the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. So the first one is snakes. It could be lies, deception. Mm -hmm. There's something you don't know where of. Uh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Number two is flying. You may see yourself flying, maybe in a balloon, maybe you're an eagle. If you're an eagle or you're a prophet and, and God's wanting to take you up to a higher level and, and uh, show you, show you some things mm -hmm. to come. Hallelujah. Uh, your dream may have people. It may have uh, people that you recognize or don't recognize. But when you see a person, it may really, it may be about you. Most of your dreams are going to be about you. In a few cases, they might be about somebody else, but let's first of all assume it's about you until the Holy Spirit says it's about somebody else. So if it's about you and it's see, see somebody who is, uh, let's say, an overseer or somebody uh, with more authority than you, it might indicate that you're moving into more authority. So it's not, it may not be about that particular patient person. Mm -hmm. And so that person may just symbolize, see, mm -hmm. symbolize something. It might be their name might symbolize something. So you have to know uh, by the Holy Spirit. This is all about the Holy Spirit. Now, you may have uh, weapons in your dream. That may be about spiritual warfare. You can have all kinds of good. Do you have a little weapon? Uh, like a, a knife, uh, or do you have a big weapon like a gun or a or rifle? A bow and arrow. Uh, what, what kind of a, how do you feel about the weapon? Might be spiritual warfare. Okay. Number five is vehicle. Vehicle. And that might be your ministry. Uh, is it a big, big vehicle? Are you in a little car? Are you in a little car? Are you in a big car? Uh, what kind of a vehicle is it? How do you feel about it? A vehicle may be related to uh, to your ministry. Or your family. Okay. And then number six is water. Is it a waterfall or or is it a lake? That might relate to the Holy Spirit. It mm, might be the, the, river. the river of life. And so uh, a lot of times you look at the water, what that, what that situation, is it clean? Is it, is it muddy? Yeah. Is it muddy? Okay, and then that, that gives you clues. We need to be interpreting our dreams. And I'm going to talk about a little bit more about it in a moment. But then there are two other things. And this is, uh, number seven is hallways. Hallway, okay, you're in a hallway, you're going down a hallway. Okay, so are the doors closed or are the doors open? These are symbols. Mm -hmm. It's a symbol of transition. You're going from mm -hmm. one, one place, place to the other. other place. That's the hallway. It's a symbol of transition. And is it light? Are there lights in the hallway? Or is it dark? Uh, and so all of these things, you're taking all of these things into account. Now, the eighth, I told you there were eight symbols I'm going to talk about. They all could be evil or they could be good, positive or negative, uh, or they could be just personal about you. Uh, it may actually represent a door that you're familiar with. Okay, so for the door, it, it may be, if it's closed, it might relate to some kind of a secret, something uh, concealed that you need to find out. You, mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit, you can find out what's behind that door. If it's an open door, it may be an opportunity for you. Uh, maybe God wants uh, you to have a better job or, or to move to another place. You see doors, okay. So I've talked about eight symbols. But that's not the end of your dream, not an end of interpret. You need to know what kind of category it is and what kind of symbols are in the in the dream. I, I've had, I told you, I had uh, uh, dreams with snakes. I've had dreams with mice. I've had uh, different kinds of dreams, and so it's only by the Holy Spirit. And so you look at the symbols. You go back into the Bible, see that symbol in the Bible. You see a door. Jesus is it's the a door. door. Amen. I'm, Jesus is standing at the door. door. You need to open the door. Maybe he wants to change your life. Maybe he wants, okay. Change so, your heart. Change Amen. your heart. So these are just a few things about how you can interpret your dreams. You need to know what category is it. Is this showing me direction? 
You'll only know that by the Holy Spirit. Is this a warning dream? Well, mm -hmm. if it's if there's something bad happening in it, uh, it may well be a warning. How can I avoid the bad thing? See, it, this is not mm -hmm. fixed. When you when God is showing you something, He's warning you to change the bad things and embrace the good things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But can I add one more to that? And okay. that because I feel like some of you uh, have had dreams about swamps, about going into a swampy, um, um, muddy area. And when you have a dream about that, if you go back uh, into the Word of God, it talks about those that get uh, bogged down in confusion and doubt and unbelief. And that swampy area is uh, an area of confusion. And so uh, just, you know, uh, to get out of that swamp, you have to rely and trust on the Lord uh, to get you out okay. and to bring you into clarity. Okay. So remember, God is wanting to draw you to him. He's wanting to become greater in your life. He's wanting you to become greater in Christ. Uh, and one of the questions I ask you, how can I become how can I trust you more? Reveal more of yourself to me. And the second one I asked was, uh, reveal more about who I am becoming in Christ. Now, I want to finish up on the doors by saying this. It matters what door it is. Is it the back door or the front door? Mm -hmm. See, if it's a back door, uh, if you're thinking and, and in your dream or in your vision, you're seeing a back door, uh, that may be your past. And maybe there's some things that need to be cleaned up or closed out mm -hmm. of the past. Maybe you had some relationships that need to be severed from your past. Okay. Uh, if it's a front door, it may be you're going the future or you're moving into the future. And there's a, a one story I heard about a, a young man had dreamed uh, about, he ran out of his house out the front door and, and he ran out on the streets and he was shot and killed. That was his dream. Uh, and the people uh, working with him said, well, that can be avoided. Uh, and it turns out he was a gang member uh, and, and dealing drugs. And they said, you need to be born again and you need to stop that. Uh, otherwise, you're going to die. It's going to mm -hmm. kill you. And, and so they're warning dreams. They're, you see, God is trying to, to, communicate. to communicate with all of us. Now, if you say, well, I, I don't dream. Well, I, I challenge you to get a piece of paper and a pen and set it by your bed. And in the night, when you wake up, immediately begin to not jot things down, write it down. What did you dream about? Uh, that's what I find. If I am prepared to, rem to, to write out my dreams, I'll have dreams and that I can write about. Okay? Mm -hmm. If I don't take the time and I don't put paper and pen out, to, then I won't remember my dreams. But if, if God is speaking to me in dreams, he's mm -hmm. speaking to you in dreams. He's speaking to the uh, dirtiest sinner, the Hallelujah. most evil sinner out there. He's speaking in dreams. And, and somebody needs to touch that man and, and bring him to Christ. And interpreting dreams helps that. Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. God. So it, what you see in the dream may be a warning. You may need to go a different street, go a different direction. It may you need to clean up what, what you're doing. Uh, but they're not fixed. They're not fixed. You can change it with prayer. And so it's the glory of God to conceal matters. So, mm -hmm. man, it, <laughs> he is a glorious God, and he's going yeah, to conceal matters. Yeah. But he's communicating with you because he wants you to know. See, uh, the disciples came to Jesus and said, why are you speaking to us in parables? He said, it's for you to know, but the people out there, I'm speaking to them, but they don't understand it. They don't know. It's about you. It's about mm -hmm. you. You need to be prepared for this age that we're living in, this time we're living in. God is communicating with us in, in many different ways, but three ways that it's just going on in the outpouring. He's communicating with us in prophecies, dreams and visions. I've given you seven categories and eight symbols. There are many, many more, but at least this is 
a start. Yeah, a start for you to begin interpreting your dreams. And if you have dreams that uh, you, you need help with, well, let us hear from you. Let yes, us know. Yes, amen. Because we need to be interpreting our dreams. We need to know how God is speaking to us, what he has planned for us. We need to avoid the pitfalls. We don't want to be destroyed. Right. Amen. And he's communicating with us to keep us from being destroyed. Thank you for being here Hallelujah. today. Hallelujah.